Hi, my name is Moan Samon. I practice, practice uh, domestic law and I'm heading of the uh, False Claim Committee in the Israeli Bar Association. I'm not talking today on behalf of the Israeli Bar Association or the committee, but I want to share with you several things we know uh, from the work of the committee and from my work in my practice. Um, just ask me your questions and I will answer. Okay, I understand that you head up a false claims committee, so um, tell me what it means, false claims, and why you need to look into it. Let's talk about domestic law. Okay. It is very easy for a woman uh, to create an advantage in the divorce process uh, by claiming that her husband only um, threatened her, said that he, she will have to pay for what she has done, and this is the only thing she needs to say for the police to get him out of his house. Um, a strength for his kids for 5 to 15 days at the first and the beginning mm -hmm. and after that he won't come back to the house so she will have the house all for herself with the children inside and this is how we get two things first of all he becomes a criminal he becomes a criminal and the second thing uh, there is a parental alienation uh, process from this point and forward. Actually, w even when a man files a claim or uh, um, say that that the women hit him, threaten him, he will get he will get out of the house and not the women. So the the woman can actually say anything, and she doesn't need any proof. Sadly, no. And the man, if he makes the same claim against her, it's dropped. Is that what you're saying? That the man most of the time, yes. Right. Most of the time, actually, I can say almost always. So you're in this committee looking into false claims. How I don't ask you because uh, statistics are hard to come by. Is it a high percentage of claims that are false? There isn't a specific statistic because the uh, the the women organization doesn't want it to be. Okay. Uh, any. Uh, it doesn't help him to victimize more women and doesn't help him, them to um, keep the situation as it is because of the funds they're getting. So, right. Um, You're a woman. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I'm getting a lot of heat because of that. Are you? Uh, yeah. Are you betraying the gender here? Actually, I'm trying to explain to everybody that it's because I'm a woman and it's because I want to help women. Um, false complaints in the police and in court are actually more hurting f towards women and uh, children who are hurt from domestic violence because in this era sometimes the police doesn't really believe the women that they're actually having to go through this and you have to uh, explain yourself one more time. You have to experience the violence one more time in the police, in court, because there are women who file false claims uh, towards domestic and other violence. Uh, the work in the committee is to prevent that, to help women, to help children uh, to get the treatment they deserve. I want to talk to you about the family court. Yeah. For I believe that most judges in the family court came into this position, wanted this position, uh, because of the ideal ideology. Right. They wanted to do better, to help people, to give uh, good verdicts, and to create a balance. But, and there is a big but. There's a but. Once you get into the system, the system doesn't help you to do that and you are alone in the system. So even though you are in good faith and you wanted to do better things, the system doesn't allow you. The system is not uh, uh, helping judges to be more courageous, to uh, not go with the string. It doesn't allow you to think very much uh, for yourself, to be independent. You have to go with um, whatever is on the table now. 
you can't do anything be beside what you can do now. So there are some courage, uh, uh, courageous uh, judges, but they're having so much criticism. So it's not very, <laughs> it's not very fun to be a courage uh, uh, judge. It should the, be the norm. It shouldn't need courage to know, do the right thing, should it? Really. Let's look at the uh, situation when women calls the police or get into the police station and uh, file a claim towards domestic violence she's having. And once she filed this uh, uh, claim, the policeman will come and take the man out of the house or will ask him to come to the police station and he will be arrested for one night or be a... Uh, um, uh, he will... He'll be held deprived. Yeah. He will be the part of his house right. for five to fifteen days. That's a long time. It's so a long time. one minute he's a normal dad and the next minute he's not. Yeah. Just like that. So once you do that, the police will uh, the women will go to the uh, social worker and to the court and will say, Look, the police do that. He must be violent. Yes. So all system, all the system, uh, the Rebaha, the social worker, the court, and the police will not take the responsibility to say, no, he's not violent. He was a normal man before that, a normative man before that, yeah. but now he's very dangerous. We're not taking um, the responsibility for not getting him out of the house because nobody wants to take this responsibility. And what if he will come back and will murder this woman? Yeah. And these children, what will we, we do? The next day, there will be a, a big headline in the newspaper. The social worker and the police did not do their job. They allowed the murder and violence and danger of men to come and kill the women, the women and the children. It doesn't happen very often, though, does it? I mean, never. I can actually think. never happens because right. once there is really a danger of man. He doesn't need the police or the social worker or court to tell him to go stand by and, and watch out. He will do it anyway. That's true enough. He will do it anyway. And we have biggest example for that. There is a man who took his two children and um, it's very he horrific. Murdered, did he he jumped from airport? a building. Really? With his sense. two children. He threw them. And he jumped. Do you really think that the police and the, the judge and the social worker could prevent that? No. They could prevent that only if they uh, put him behind bars. And he wasn't behind bars. And he wasn't behind bars because they didn't treat it well. So the injunction that tell men to stay away will not help, will not help in this situation. He's going to do it anyway. Yeah. What kind of men do you have as clients? Are they all poor, uh, you know, child support avoiders, bad dads, no. downbeat, no. low life losers? Because I think they're the terms I hear a lot. <laughs> what kind of men do you get? My firm deals only with domestic uh, uh, law. Um, we have medium and wealthy clients. We have both women and men, most men, mm -hmm. women. Um, all of them pay child support unless I uh, help them to get the custody of their um, children. How hard is that? Very hard in yeah. Israel. <laughs> it's very hard, but uh, this firm uh, puts against the we decided that we are acting in the behalf of the children. So when we are trying to get the custody, we are looking at what is best for the children. If it's best for the children to be with the father, it will be with the father and we will we'll do everything that we can do to do that. Unless they're under six. No, actually, You yeah. can still win custody sometimes for children under six because the law 
the tender years clause says six and under goes to the mother yes. automatically. Mm-hmm. So you have a big fight there, yeah? We have a big fight, but we have some successes in that area. Right. Uh, the last child that we uh, put into the custody of the father is four and a half years old. It was in the last six months. Uh, it's very hard. The system is not along that very easy, but we can do that. How hard is it? Um, because the rights of the child is a big thing, okay? There's a treaty for the rights of the child. Uh, I'm aware that children don't have the right to actually always speak for what they want, or it's very hard for them in court to say, I want to see my dad, I want to see my mum. Do you come across that a lot? Because there is a treaty that says the child should be allowed to speak to the judge, but here it doesn't happen that often. So basically, the the question the question I meant was how how hard is it for the child uh, to get the right to speak in certain cases when there's a social worker involved? Okay, in most custody cases, the judge will uh, give the authority to the social worker to uh, talk to the child, but there are some cases that the child wants to talk to the judge directly. Um, in my experience, and my experience, experience, experience only, <laughs> when the child is uh, over 11, 12 years old, the judge will take him to his chambers. But, and there is a big but, when social worker uh, get their experience from Vito uh, Women, and Vito is a women organization, it's a bit problematic for the child and men to get their voice heard because they are getting instructions from women organization. That is why I believe we need to uh, take it out, take Vito out of the, the picture and let the social worker get the instructions from people like me, from the field, uh, from lawyers, who handle people every day, men and women, uh, from other social workers who deals with men and women and not only from women organization. And that is when the court will have a balanced picture uh, than what they have today. Now, I heard last week at the Vito uh, Kennis that there's a proposal on the table for treatment courts um, whereby if there's a claim made uh, of violence on a man, which we now establish can be quite false, um, he's then potentially, with the budget, sent to a treatment court where he'll be ordered to get treatment. <laughs> um, statistics, which, shows <laughs> which that, worrying, really. statistics shows that um, there is more women violence than men violence towards kids. And it's much harder. This is the sad part of all of this. Uh, Because you can't treat only one side. You need to treat both sides. You need to treat women and men equally when there are violence toward children. children. Because it's not possible to throw all the responsibility towards men. Women need to start and take responsibility for their half or their share of the things that happens. Um, It is much easier to say he's a man, he's very strong, women are weak, they are victimized. We need to help women, but we are keeping the victimized situation of women and we are not letting them evolve. When we are um, when we are keeping the the age of the custody. Right down, yeah. The sixth, the age of the custody of children, we're preventing women to go to work more hours. When we are preventing that, we're not helping them uh, help the child support money. And we're putting all the responsibility on men. And it's a circle. You need to break this circle and let women to go to work, to be productive, to help raise their kids as much as uh, they want to raise their kids and share it with the husband or the father because he was a part of the, the family was, before that. He was that. once. Yeah, he was my once. Yeah. Uh, How can a man be that violent or that dangerous if he can only see his child in a Merkaz Kesha 
or oh, contact it's center. It's <laughs> <laughs> We're talking uh, about a very painful uh, situation. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Merkaz Kesha, uh, at the beginning of it, it was a very good thing. It helped uh, creating a relationship between uh, a father or mother and the children where there are no... Um, Observation. Observation outside. This was at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, almost every time there is a woman that's saying that the husband is violent, directly they, they are uh, putting you in the Merkaz Kesha and saying, okay, we need the observation now. And it's not coherent to the situation. So, It's very hard to create a relationship inside the Merkaz Kesha, but you need to go there if you want to go out of there at some point. But if you're I, violent. I'm hearing, if you're, if you're allegedly yeah. violent, allegedly I'm hearing violence. fathers have spent three or four or five years seeing children in a, in a Merkaz Kesha. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's okay. Right. Sometimes there are no uh, other solutions. Okay. But most of the times, it's because the woman held the children like their own property. And they're saying, oh, it's violence, it's violence, even though there are never complaints towards violation, uh, violence towards kids, even if she served the claim only towards her. Right. And this is the, the big and problem the that we have. And of course, yeah. there's, there's money to be made here. I a mean, the, we, we, we need to touch on how much money is being made in family breakdown in Israel. If we are taking down children, taking out children from the house, the, unfortunately, it's a lot of money. Every family that gets a child, even for a foster family, um, will get around... 10,000 shekels per child per month. And think about that. If you put this money into uh, saving this family and help this family to get treatment, to get uh, um, lifestyle, more, more lifestyle, you will, have, you will help so many families. But the easier solution is to get them out and put in a foster family that gets money every month. It's a uh, very uh, commercial. It's very commercial. Yeah. Do you know how much money is um, paid out for the child in an institution? I've heard it's about 17,000 shekel a month per child. I heard the same thing. I don't know it. No one's denied time. it. Yeah, I heard the same <laughs> uh, thing. And no one's denied it. Yeah. So uh, it. there is a concern about high fostering because I read a report recently Uh, from the UN that there's too many foster parents here, that there's a concern in the increase. So there's a financial benefit in fostering them, without yes. a doubt. It's a business. Yes, it's a business. It's a business. So. I believe that it started as the benefit of the children. I really believe that, but... <sighs> it all started it's good. It all started good. It? When did it go wrong and why has it gone wrong? You know, what's the? can you pinpoint what's gone wrong? We have to go to the 70s. <laughs> back to the 70s. Yeah, back to the 70s when uh, men ruled the world okay. in Israel. Right. And women were very small and felt very small. And so Vitzel and Naamat grew, grew stronger uh, in the last 25 years. Uh, we got funds from Akan Chadesha Ali Israel. Um, and the more stronger they got, They wanted to eat more. They wanted to get more powerful. And that is how, that is how they started uh, getting more and more um, funds and more and more power towards people. Uh, billions, actually. Billions yeah, and billions. billions and billions towards children. And now, a children is a pawn in this game. Definitely. It's a pawn in, in, this, in its game. Uh, and it's very sad. So two questions. Mezzanot, child support. Yeah. Um, it still is true that the woman's income here does not count in divorce for child support, that the man is 100% responsible financially for his children. Is As every a- good question <laughs> and every good <laughs> answer in Israel, it's yes and no. Okay. Uh, yeah. A Jewish man have to provide 
uh, everything for his child, but more and more judges, courageous judges, and even the rabbinical court uh, these last few days um, are helping to balance the situation. There are more and more women who um, their income is higher than men, and it's not very rational to ask the men to pay child support when the woman earns more than he does. So we are trying to balance, but yes, as for your questions, today a man has to uh, pay, he has to pay child support in Israel, no matter how much his income. So it could be even 100% sometimes. Yeah, even some, or sometimes, or, or even more. Even sometimes, more. Yeah. Just, press, just say that one again for me, even more than he earns can sometimes be asked for. Yes, yeah, sometimes he will pay even more than he earns. The judge will send you to, to, set, to sell your kidneys. Yeah, so what does he I do? I won't say that. <laughs> uh, the, judge will, say, <laughs> the, judge, that. the judge will ask him to work another job. So he will be ordered, okay, you have one job, you owe X, now go and get a second job and pay Y. That's, the judge can order someone to yes, have two but jobs? Most of the times, it's not often. But most of the times the judge will see the income of the woman, the woman, the income of the man, and he will try to balance it. The man will have to pay child support, but he will have to pay child support. Um, well, how does he live? Where does he go? Relative to his income. Where does he go? How does he live if he's paying over 100%? No. How does he pick up his children? Where does he take them? What does he do? What kind of a dad will he a become now? A big part of divorced men go back to live with their parents, live with their friends, don't have a place to of their own, and the uh, it it's the end go, of them. Yeah, it's the end of them and the relationship with their children because where will you take the children to go to? How can you? If How you, can if you? If you don't, if you don't have a place of your own, or even the bus fare. Um, it's I a very sad situ- situation. Very but sad. We have to put the children in the middle and we have to put them ahead and to say that the children need both parents and not only one. Right. And that is the progress with that we are going to. Ikovitsia, stop orders, now it's uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, subject. <laughs> more and more, you have to know that more and more judges in domestic court won't give the Ikovitsia uh, to every man. More and more judges, but yeah, but uh, there is a difference between the Atzala Atzala Poana yeah. and domestic court. Right, because uh, you know, over a million people have a Yukovitsia stop yeah. order in the Atzala Pol, the bailiff, and uh, that can be for a debt or that can be for assumed debt, or maybe you'll run, or maybe, maybe that's not a judge's um, no. domain. Nobody will take the responsibility that the man won't come back. Right. Even though he's yeah. saying, I'm only going to for a week, for a vacation, for a wedding or whatever. Nobody will take the responsibility that he will leave and not get back and the child will be, will stay without the child support. So in order to prevent that, the, uh, the bills are and the bonds are very high and you can't go out of the country and you're like a prisoner in your own country a prisoner in your own country i have heard of men who've been asked to pay ahead to pay child support ahead to leave yeah three four months or or even a year 20 years i never heard of that but i believe if you say so yeah uh well in my own case it was 36 years ahead so uh, but i am hearing all the time of people having to bond for one two three ten twenty all depends okay um do you come across people that are broken by not being able to leave you know how it breaks their lives yeah i mean i even have a client that is a citizen of the u.s and a citizen of israel and he can leave the israel in about three or four years because he doesn't pay child support and he can't pay child support because he is 100% handicapped. And she's taking all of his uh, money, social security money, she's taking everything and because he doesn't pay enough, he's staying in Israel. He can't leave Israel. And we are trying to deal with this for three or four years now. He missed his own brother wedding for that. He never saw his nieces. 
How does that and make you? Feel, how does that make you feel when you know that people can't actually just go see family and live like a? I'm no. ambivalent about that okay. because, in one hand, I want the child to have the children in Israel to have the child support and and to live very good. On the other hand, I really believe in human rights, and I believe that even if you get this opportunity to leave Israel, he will get back here because he's got his children here, and he will want to see them. He won't leave them, and she will still get his social security money when he's away. So I don't see why. There seems yeah. to be a theory here that no, but, no, that fathers don't love their children. That yeah, they I just suddenly walk out the house one day after 10, 20 years and they just it's don't love them. They don't love them. They don't want to pay. They've worked all the hours God sends for them all their lives. And then they leave the house and they don't want them anymore. Do you remember yeah. before that uh, they say that yeah. women organization got stronger? Mm. It's a part of the propaganda. What do we do with the young girls of today who've been brought up like this? And the young men. I have a son of my own. I thread the day that he will become a man and he, uh, he will have to uh, deal with fal- false claims. You're worried for him, huh? I'm very worried for him and I'm worried for the women, the young women, the young girls who will become women. We are raising a generation who will be very, very, um, on one hand, will be very intimidated from the situation and will be very powerful and and I don't know how they will handle this power that we're giving them. Don't get married, tell him not to get married. Actually, I don't believe in that. (laughs) (laughs) I I think that you can get married, but you need to do it properly. You need to get, I believe that when you will become parents, you need to go to parental guidance. I need, I think it should be a mandatory uh, that every couple that bringing children into the world, we have to go uh, three or six months parental guiding. That doesn't happen anywhere in the world. I, think I know. Just go back. Um, but hey, Israel <laughs> should be the first in that also. Would you? Do you think it's good for uh, funding to help some of the men? You know, because the men's groups are well, they're all a bit devastated, aren't they, right now? Because the men are devastated. Do you think funding would help to get the balance against the women's organization funding? As I said, it's a circle. Yeah. The men today are like the women in the 70s and 80s in Israel. Yeah. Um, I believe the funds will help men to get the balance that we should have in Israel. I believe every child should have a mother and a father, a mother and a mother, should have two parents in his life. And you can prevent that from children. Everything I'm saying here, it's because I love my country. Mm. I really love my country. I love raising my child here. And there is no black and white in domestic. No black and white. It's all with the circumstances. So we need to uh, put it under consideration when we are talking about child uh, rights and women and men's rights.